Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Yeah, she's back with us. Always has some really great insight on different ways to help you heal through energy, through hypnotherapy, uh, and so much. Her website is myquantumheal.com. And we're going to look at the plan. That's what this is all about today. The plan for your future to help you heal, help you move your life forward, help you figure out some things and get clarity as well. She is Dr. Cecilia Cervantes, and she's back with us. Cecilia, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, and I'm happy to be here today. Great to have you back. And in the past, we've talked about many different modalities, uh, even timeline therapy, which I did with you. Uh, there's so much that can be done to help people. But how does that all to come together when you're working with somebody coming up with a plan? Because uh, that's really what it's about, you know, the that planning for the future. How do you start with that when you talk with somebody? Well, generally what I do is I do a very comprehensive deep dive with them looking at all of their history, absolutely everything, and writing things down. You know, what are they saying about themselves and their mm. emotions and their life, their lifestyle? What's working? What's not working? What do they want to change? So we have to look at absolutely everything. How are they living? What do they do? How do they eat? How do they sleep? <clears throat> How do they hydrate themselves? Which sure. I need to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and I was just thinking before, I'm like, I left my coffee in the other room. And uh, I'm looking forward <clears throat> to getting back to that in a little bit. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hydration is <clears throat> so key. It's it's yeah. probably one of the top reasons that people don't feel well, have mental issues, can't have yes. brain fog because we don't drink enough. I know we've, we've skimmed over that in the past, but it's it makes such a huge difference. It's it's uh, very, very important because we're made mostly of water. Sure. And so we need to rehydrate. And people often aren't hydrating properly enough. And the best way to hydrate is with water. If yeah. you need to flavor it, okay, some tea, some decaffeinated tea. Because remember, anything with caffeine is going to act as a diuretic. So it will remove some water from the body. It will make you go to the bathroom more. So you have to balance things out. Everything in life is about balance. Mm. You lead, need to lead a balanced life. <clears throat> because if it's too much tilted to one side or the other, you're going to be lopsided. You're going to feel lopsided. So hydration is key. Nutrition is key. What are you putting in your body? What are you eating? Is it is it clean, good, good, clean food? Or is it full of some toxins, some chemicals? Those will ultimately affect your body. And what are you putting in your mind? You know, how are you feeling about life and things? Are you someone who's uh, very negative in their thinking? That isn't very good for you. It does cause inflammation in the body. It, it leads you towards a negative path, a negative future. You want a positive future. So you have to start shifting those thoughts in a positive fashion. You have a very strong background in terms of nutrition to help people with that as well. Do you find that a lot of people just are in this cycle of eating and food choices and they, it's almost as if they got swallowed up by it and they can't change it. And then just when they feel like, yeah, you know, I'm going to make that a little, then they stop at the fast food place. And then it, and then it just goes around and around again. Uh, I find myself in that a lot of times. Sometimes uh, I bought organic food. I feel better. I cooked a meal. I feel better. Then life gets in the way. The other day I was rushing out to a meeting at night and it's like, what did I grab? A hot pocket. Uh, <laughs> I just had to. And, and it, I didn't have a choice. I needed to eat at that time. I was even driving while I was eating the hot pocket. Um, unfortunately, obviously not the best thing in terms of what's in there, but it's not even a lot of protein. It's, it, it's a, you know, cheese and meatballs, and it's got like maybe eight grams of protein, which is ridiculous. I don't understand how it's so low, but that's a, you know, another, just not good for you. Um, is it a, could just a, a cold turkey start? Let's, let's just, you know, stop and start again with recommendations from you, or is it a gradual kind of change that people need to make? Most people need a gradual change. 
And, and that's fine. You know, taking baby steps, limit, eliminating one or two bad things that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can start there. And as you start to feel better, then you might be more encouraged to take away some other things that aren't working for you. <clears throat> if you're able to keep some kind of a, a log or a diary on what you're doing, but notice how you're feeling as you're making these changes. That's going to encourage you to go forward, move forward with it. Take um, baby steps in, you know, it, it, if you have certain bad habits you want to get rid of. And, and mm. that's where having the professional help really, really is good. You know, if you want to stop drinking so much or, or eating too much of a certain food, you know, carbs that are affecting your blood sugar. You have to concentrate on that and you have to concentrate on moving towards your goals as well. We talked about goals before, creating goals and then taking action towards them. Mm. Writing down what's going to help me achieve mm. that goal. What do I really need to let go of? You have to be 100% in. And some people don't get 100% in until they hit the bottom, you know, rock bottom. Yeah. You know, and they have nowhere else to go. Uh, and they know they have to do something. But if you can do it before you hit rock bottom, that would be great. And well, even if you are there at rock bottom, um, you start somewhere and you take a few steps in the right direction. Unfortunately, rock bottom can also be a health crisis, a health scare. Yes. Where you get to that point, it's like, oh, now I really got to make <clears throat> those changes. Um You've mentioned this before, and it just flicked in my head, and I think it's it's such a great idea, keeping a food diary. Now there's accountability, because you know me in the hot pocket. You know I, I forgot about that until we talked about it, but the, when it's on your mind and staring you in the face, you look and say, "I ate. What did I eat? Wow. Okay. Hmm. Got to make some changes. Even when you go out to eat, you forget sometimes because you're caught up in the moment." And that's okay too. You know, you need to enjoy yourself at some point. But when you start adding it up, all that stuff that you're eating, the, the stuff you shouldn't be eating, uh, and you stare it at it on a page or in your phone, I think that's where the reality click really clicks in your head. Yeah. You you can start by making a list of, you know, places that you you're willing to go to because you know they have good food. So you have mm -hmm. a list of go-to places. And then the places you are never gonna go to again because they don't serve you. It's fast food. It's very plastic. It tastes like garbage. And it, it, you know, when you eat fast foods, a lot of people eat fast, right? They don't even taste the food. Yeah. So you've got to learn to slow down and really taste what you're eating. Does it taste like real food, whole food, or some kind of chemical mush? Yeah. And even those little tweaks, I, I don't use condiments. I just don't like them. You know, even ketchup, I'll eat it if it comes on something, but I don't ask for it because I like to taste the flavor of the food. But all of that stuff like sour cream, you know, a sauce that might come on something, uh, mayo. I've I've weaned myself off of that years ago. Not to say that I'm, you know, I'm nutritionally perfect here at all, but it's if I can eliminate those and don't need them, um, it's, it's you're one step closer to less fat and less things that you probably shouldn't be eating. Right. And, and making better choices, if you do eat those things, is fine. And mm -hmm. now what we found is it's the carbs, those, uh, those simple carbs we want to reduce um, and eat more complex carbs like fruits and vegetables and things like that. In terms of fat, um, it's not, as long as you're eating good fats, it's okay. In fact, our body needs fat. Our brain needs fat. We need fat. So fats are becoming less the enemy. It's more those simple carbs that we have to handle and tackle. And then all the chemicals in our food are foods that are not whole, not real. We need to mm -hmm. get back to whole food eating. That's what we have to do, you know, and more organic, not chemically treated. All those things. Yeah. Because bottom line is there is too many, there are too many toxins in the environment. And that's what's causing a lot of disease in in uh, most people also. All those toxins that we're taking in from the air, from the water, from the foods, from, you know, the foods we're eating, right? 
Is you ever hear this? Somebody told me this very recently that we always talk about genetics causing disease or a big factor in it. And somebody told me recently, it's really only about 1% your genetics. The rest of it is your environment, i.e. what you're talking about, the food we're eating, the pesticides, the chemicals, all that stuff going on in there. Do you really think it's the, you know, genetically that number is, is sitting quite low? Yes. Uh, what we found when we broke the genetic code is that it's that our genes are merely the potential. It it represents potential, but mm. what's the trigger? What you know pushes that button that sets everything off? All these toxins. Okay. Clean up your toxins. So that's that is we know it's a big deal, but I want to put more emphasis on it. It's a bigger yeah. deal than we ever thought. It's a bigger deal than we ever thought. I would say read Bruce Lipton's book. Uh, what is it? Uh, Biology of Belief. Mm. And he's a cell biologist. He explains it all very simply, very succinctly. You can understand it. It's the environment and the toxins that throw off that trigger, that push that trigger, that sets everything off. If you had to put a percentage on the importance of eating correctly in terms of minimizing all of our problems, our challenges, you know, disease and, and illness and all of that, what, what percentage would you put there? You know, hundred percent being that's the, that, that is obviously it's not, but hundred percent is, is the reason for all of that. What do you think you'd put it at? Uh, put at uh, things that causing disease you're saying? No, the no. importance of eating properly. Oh, oh, the yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's very important, of course. Uh, or the in... or, or what we're talking about—the toxins in our food being yeah. problematic. You know that. Yes. Uh, where would you put that? Would would it be sitting at like uh, you know seventy percent of uh, you know our challenges here? Would it be like forty percent? Again, well, this is just estimates. It's a very kind of a wide question. Um, ultimately, yeah, let's say it's sixty percent. Okay. Okay, so eating properly, very, very, very important. When we started eating more garbage, you know, things got worse. There's a lot of other toxins involved. It gets complicated because there's, uh, we've talked about uh, the electromagnetics and that is a toxin also. Uh, so that okay, adds, so adds to it. You're talking, um, having your cell phone near you uh, when you're sleeping at night or keeping it on yeah. you at all times. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I all mean, right. that's, that's another toxin that affects, mm. uh, it, it affects the cells of our body. It affects our electrical systems. So now you, it's like you're layering on all these different things, toxins. And, uh, if you don't eat right, um, if you don't get proper hydration, uh, if you have a toxic personality or you're around toxic people, and everything is negative, negative, negative. You're not getting exercise. You're not doing your self-care. You're not brushing your teeth and doing all mm. these things that are important. Um, you have not very good social connections with other people, you know? It's just one negative on top of the other. That isn't very good, you know? Uh, so we have to do these lifestyle changes, even if you do it little by little, but look at your life, examine yourself, examine the kind of life you're living. What's good, what's bad, what's indifferent, what can come, what can go, you know? You have to really examine your life. And most people don't do that. They're busy watching the, the friggin', um, sorry, the, uh, um, the <laughs> okay. television. Yes. And yeah. they, um, their phones, all this garbage they're filling in their heads with the stuff on the screens and living an unhealthy lifestyle. And maybe they're smoking or using some other drugs or medications. There's so many things that they can change about the way they're living. Now, when you talk about a wellness plan, of course, you have the individual modalities. Yep, we can use, I call it the, the tool you know, chest. Okay, we can use this. This is going to work for you. Timeline therapy could be whatever. This is hypnotherapy. That could do the job. Uh, energy healing, 
whatever. Do you also work with somebody on the full plan? For example, even something, if we drill down on the list, the somebody's social situation, their social connections, you know, you, maybe you're doing the 360, looking at the food, looking at the stress management. Do you, in your plan, include all of that to help somebody coach them along in, in every aspect that way? Absolutely. We look at mm -hmm. the whole picture. It's a holistic plan. So I, that's why the first visit where we're finding out, we're, we're searching out what's going on with your life. It takes a few hours because we look at everything. Mm. Absolutely. I even ask people sometimes about uh, how their birth was and their relationships. I always ask about the relationships with the parents, mm. brothers, sisters, other people, significant others. How, how are those going? What's going on there? Everything factors in. It is a holistic view that we need to get. And what word do we say when we say holistic? Whole. <laughs> it's the whole view of everything. 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 Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I have a friend who is has some challenges with her seven-year-old, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, could be ADHD. And they're not sure going on for testing and such. Um, a doctor recently asked her, how was your birth with your children? And she did have some challenges with this one child. So I bring this up to your point, the full 360 situation to learn, you know, did when when your, your mom gave birth, were there any issues, any complications? If you know that, could be impactful, could learn something. Absolutely. There could be some, uh, some negative emotions that occurred, um, mm. some limiting beliefs that started at that point. Uh, there are so many different factors. If, if it was an easy birth or a difficult birth, right? Yeah. There, there are a lot of things that could be occurring. Now, when you're in the womb, you are, you are able to hear at a certain point, you know, the ears are one of the first things the hearing develops. One of the first things to develop is the hearing. And so you can hear, you know, your mother speaking, um, you can feel a lot of different things. So mm. you are already in the world at that point and experiencing life and things and what's going on with your mother. Wow. When we talk about the, the traumas that we may have suffered way back then, you know, as a child, is it very possible that somebody could have experienced a trauma in womb? And I don't mean like a physical trauma, like mom fell, but just let's say hypothetically here, the parents weren't getting along. There was lots of noise, lots of arguments. Could that be something that, call it a limiting belief, a, tra a trauma, whatever it was, uh, that somebody's dealing with now that's holding them back from something? It absolutely could be. Wow. You know, they, they may have heard something uh, in the womb that was very, very negative or an argument or a fight. And, and, and that was very traumatic wow. for the, for the, uh, for the, for the developing child, absolutely. They're hearing parents fighting, or maybe they're fighting about money or or about even staying together. Wow. Or all those things, those are traumatic events. And it will impact the fetus. It will impact the developing child, the baby. It impacts you. Mm. You yeah. feel it. We're feeling as soon as we can, as we're developing. Our systems are developing. Our neurology is developing. All these things are developing and they are... are functional so of of course we can we can feel all of that going on and that's all the stuff that you need to and a very popular term nowadays unpack where you have to take those things out and let's let's take a look at this right here as part of your wellness plan for somebody let's take a look at this how this might impact you uh that said is there anything that stands out in your mind cecilia where somebody had a limiting belief based on something that you found through a modality or whatever it was, something maybe may, may a little more uh, surprising that one might not think. Anything stand out? Well, it uh, there was someone who wanted to have children pretty badly and couldn't, uh, wasn't being very successful, working on it quite a bit, investing a lot of money. And there was a belief uh, during uh, her birth because it was traumatic that um mm. that you know that it could uh, it could be dangerous and so 
the body was afraid. You know, your your body is impacted by your mind. The mind informs the body. So the mind is informing the body that being pregnant, having a child can be dangerous. It could potentially kill you. So it's a you... belief, a belief that, you know, somehow occurred at that time. And so it making it difficult for this person to get pregnant, even to get pregnant and carry it through because there's that belief that this could be dangerous. Wow. And that came from their childhood that their birth was challenging? Very traumatic, uh, you know, birth process where they had to wow. use the... Uh, uh, forceps the forceps uh, whatever. and you yeah. know hours and hours of labor struggle all of that you know it, it was uh, amazing that she even survived that so there's that there's that first fear wow that is <laughs> no words and and that situation held her back from conceiving because in her mind her body internalized birth bad birth is bad so I'm not going to let you get pregnant. I'm going to, you know, body is saying this, this, you know, yeah. we're, I'm going to protect you from this. Your subconscious is really protecting you from what it thinks it needs to protect you from. Yes. And so a lot of these beliefs start very early on. It could be starting in the womb. It could be as a child experiencing a lot of trauma in the family and believing, oh, this doesn't work well. You know, I don't, I don't think I could do this. You know, I, I don't like, uh, you know, the parents don't get along. Relationships don't work. So there's a belief that pops up and they never have end up having a, a successful relationship in their life because that belief is there people mm. just can't have successful relationships so that you don't have successful relationships and you wonder why can't i find the right person the right you know what what what's wrong with me all of that um and so we we have to unpack all of this when did you start believing that yeah that is the key question. When did you start believing that? Because it's a belief. Doesn't mean they, it's true. Doesn't mean it's true. You know, hello, Santa. <laughs> you know, we believe that as a child and we believe all these other things based on our experiences doesn't mean they're true. And as I learned from you with timeline therapy, if we go back to where we remember the belief started, it's, it's almost if you, there's a carpet, a long run uh, hallway of carpeting, and there's situations standing on the carpeting. And we, when you go back to the beginning, whoosh, you rip that carpet up, all those things standing on the carpet, those situations that uh, were part of the, the limited belief all go away. They all just disappear, which is exactly. fantastic. Yeah. Once yeah. you go back. Um, yes. We create our reality with our beliefs, our experiences our emotions, our thoughts, all these things help to create our world. We all see the world in our own unique way. Mm. And then we allow ourselves to move forward or to be kept back or stuck because of those things as well. Yeah. Lots to, to learn when somebody calls you, but there's also a lot of healing to be done and uh, you got to have a plan. And, and there's, 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 there's plans there for you in terms of your wellness. There's so much that can be done from nutrition. And that's the best part about you aside, you're, you're actually a doctor, but aside from all of that, you have the background in nutrition and healing and so many different modalities. Myquantumheal.com is the website and free consult. Somebody can yes. get when they reach out. 20 minutes, free consult. Beautiful. Yeah. Highly recommended people. She's good. She knows her stuff and uh, has the answers for you. And I got to eat better. No more hot pockets. <laughs> <laughs> throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it, yeah, exactly. You know what? Can I, final thing here. You know why I bought them? Why? I did food delivery, went on the website. Oh. No, wait. They made a mistake or something. They were 29 oh. cents. Normally they're 429. So I bought like six boxes of them. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so six boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I couldn't. Anybody wants any hot pockets? They're on me. I I couldn't resist it, but you know it's good there. I guess if you have you know that last minute situation, I need to eat, but just not good for you. Just not good. Uh, Cecilia, always great talking with you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great week. You Thank too. Thank you, Steve. We'll be right back. Oh, oh. 
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.